Hello guys, uh, my name is Peter Zhou. I am the chief scientist of VeChain. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, VeChain core part of the AMA uh, series. Um, so you know, our public blockchain VeChain Thor has been up and running for about three and a half months. And you probably didn't know we have published our source code on GitHub. But I feel like it's there are so many cool features about VeChain Thor and uh, I'm going to bring them up today and let you guys to, to know that. So here is the topics I'm gonna to cover today. So first thing first is the multi-party uh, payment protocol or MPP. I know you guys probably already know that and uh, we have been talking about that for a long time, but um, I think we haven't covered how it is implemented on VeChain, so I think that's important for you guys to know. So I'm gonna talk about that. So the second topic is the enhanced transaction model. So you probably know the multi-task uh, transaction model, MTT. That's one feature of our transaction model. There are also other features there. So um, I would give details about these features today. Um, the third topic is the on-chain government's mechanism. So in our white paper, we have a very comprehensive um, governance model there. But we haven't talked about how this model will be implemented on VeChain Thor. So today, I'm going to talk about this on-chain governance mechanism. And uh, that will be some surprise for you guys. So I'm going to talk about the current progress of our core development team, uh, what they are doing, what they're going to do, what, going to, what, what, what are the, uh, the next uh, deliverable uh, to developers and also the VeChain Thor users. And uh, at the end, because since I'm the chief scientist, I'm in charge of the research and IP in VeChain. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about VeChain's IP and uh, uh, research progress. Okay, let's talk about MPP and its uh, implementation. So one of VeChain's missions is to allow mass adoption of decentralized um, applications or dApps for ordinary people and enterprises. So we have to figure out what stops people or enterprises to use the app right now. So it turns out it's simply just because it's very hard to handling crypto assets. You might say, wait, 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 it's, 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 you said you're talking about crypto assets, it's not the app, but um, in order to use the apps, you have to acquire such an amount of uh, crypto assets. That's because when you use the app to interact with blockchains, you have to send transactions to blockchains and these transactions have to be paid by crypto assets. So for people with very little knowledge of blockchain, it's very hard for them to, to do that. Uh, first, they have to understand various concepts of the blockchain. Um, second, they have to find a place to acquire crypto assets. And third, they have to master those tools to use the crypto assets to sign transactions. So it's really hard, we all know that. It's, it's just like a, um, you ask people to use internet, but they have to understand the underlying protocol, underlying TCP IT protocol. If that is the requirement, I don't think people are gonna use internet because it's just simply too hard. So, as a blockchain platform, uh, what we can do um, to change that situation. So our solution is the MPP, is the multi-party uh, payment protocol. Um, what it can do is it allows someone else to pay for your transaction costs, uh, simply as that. Does that change the current situation um, of using the dApps? Um, I will explain later. So how is the MPP implemented on VeChain Thor? Um, we haven't talked about much about that. So there, there, we did three things. The first thing is we um, hard code the rules of MPPs into the lower level blockchain protocol. That means um, every transaction comes to VeChain Thor, the system will try these rules to execute these um, transactions. So MPP will be done for every transaction. Um, secondly, we have implemented some uh, native methods 
um, to set up account relationships. Uh, I'm gonna get to the details uh, in the next uh, couple of slides. The third thing we did is we introduced a very cool feature. We give every account a hidden property. It's like a, the account have, can have a master account property. So the master account can use to manage various smart contracts and set up um, the, uh, the relationship between the smart contracts and, um, and other accounts. So I'm gonna cover that uh, shortly. Okay, so you probably are already very familiar with this uh, graph. It's already in, on our white paper. Um, it says who pays for your transaction. In VeChain Thor, we have implemented a hierarchical payment system. It's called a, a multi-party payment protocol. As you guys already know, we have been talking about that for a long time. So the protocol says if the transaction sender is a registered user of the transaction receiver, the transaction receiver can pay for uh, the transaction cost for the sender. Uh, moreover, the transaction receiver can be sponsored by a sponsor account. So the transaction cost can pay by the sponsor. So here we defined uh, two new relationships between accounts. That's the uh, usership and the sponsorship. The usership is between the transaction sender and the transaction receiver. And the sponsorship is between the transaction receiver and the sponsor. When it comes to the question of who should pay for the transaction, so the VeChain Thor system will check both the usership and the sponsorship. If the system find, finds out that there's a usership between the transaction sender and the transaction receiver, it will check the credit plan the transaction receiver has set for the transaction sender. So if the transaction cost is permitted, the system will uh, deduce uh, the transaction cost from the account balance of the transaction receiver. It will also check the sponsorship. So uh, if there is a sponsorship in place and um, the transaction receiver is um, going to pay for the transaction cost uh, for the transaction sender, then the fund is going to be deduced from the account balance of the sponsor account. With MPP, the DApp users now can use the DApps without worrying about digital assets because uh, if they are the registered user of the DApps, so the DApps will pay for the, their transaction cost. Also, the owner of the transaction even the DApp operators, uh, they could be freed from handling the crypto assets because they can find some sponsor who is specialized um, in uh, managing digital assets to pay for their DApps. So in order to use MPP, um, we have to uh, find a way to set up these account relationships. For example, you have to uh, have a method to set up the usership. Also, you have the method to set up the sponsorship to, uh, to implement the MPP. So in Vision Thor, uh, if you look at our Genesis block, you probably find that uh, there are a few smart contracts deployed uh, in the block. So one of them is called a prototype. You can also find the source code on GitHub. So uh, building smart contracts defines all the methods uh, we can use to set up and manage account management. This prototype defines all the methods you can use um, to set up and manage the account relationships for, for MPP. Also a very interesting you might be find out that is the source code is not uh, implemented in the smart contracts code. If you look at the code, it's only the interface for all the methods. So the source code is actually uh, natively implemented as part of the VGN Thor. So why we implement these methods natively? That's because a native method can help us to uh, store the relationship between accounts directly to the blockchain state. And this kind of information can then be accessed by the system when uh, 
when it executes a transaction. Okay, so when you send a transaction to the prototype smart contract to call a method uh, to, to set up, for example, um, the usership for um, a particular account, what the system is gonna do? So first, um, the system will check the, the transaction's receiver. So here, if the receiver is the prototype uh, smart contract uh, address, like this address is fixed. So if, if the receiver is the address, then the system is gonna intercept uh, the whole process uh, normally. If the transaction receiver's address is not uh, those building smart contracts address, it will go to the EVM to try to execute the transaction. If the transaction receiver is one of the building smart contracts address, the system can intercept the process and it will um, try to figure out what native method the transaction is going to call from the data um, together with the transaction and calls the native method. Okay, now let's look at uh, what native method has been defined in prototype uh, smart contract. So we have set users, remove user, is user. Here, the first set of methods let you to set up, remove, and check the usership. The second set of methods is let you check uh, how much credit you've given to uh, your users to use and also set up a new credit plan for your user to use. We also have sponsor, unsponsor, uh, and is sponsor. These methods can be used by the sponsor accounts to set up sponsorship or remove the sponsorship or for others to check whether the sponsorship is in place. Also, we have the select sponsor and the current sponsor. So for every smart contract, they can have multiple sponsors. So we can, we can use select sponsors to select a sponsor uh, to sponsor the smart contracts. So every smart contract can only have one active sponsor uh, who pays the money for the smart contract. We can also use current sponsor to check whether this account is the current sponsor of a smart contract. And also we have set master. It is a, a method that lets you to set the master for a smart contract or any account. So we will cover master uh, property in the next slide. So if you're really interested at the implementation details, you can check the source code I have listed here. Okay, let's talk about uh, master accounts, uh, the, uh, the hidden property of every account on VeChain so I have mentioned before. So uh, what is master account? When you deploy a smart contract, the deployer is automatically set as the master account of the smart contract. So what the uh, master can do is the master account automatically uh, got the power to set uh, the usership for the smart contract, to set uh, the credit plan for the smart contract. It can also remove the usership to change the credit plan or even uh, assign a new master to the smart contract. So uh, here is a situation it's very likely you will encounter when you are managing a, a D app on VeChain Thor. So uh, you'll probably have multiple smart contracts running on VeChain Thor. And then with the uh, master property, you will have the uh, one single master account um, managing the smart contracts. So from this account, you can set users for smart contract one, you can set users for smart contract two, um, and also you can, uh, for every smart contract, it could be uh, multiple sponsors available. So you can use the master account to send transactions to prototype uh, smart contract to select 
which sponsor is going to pay for a particular smart contract. So the benefit is obvious. So with the master account mechanism, um, the operator of a dApp can use one single account here to manage all the smart contracts. 